Hello. The topic of this video is the duality of electromagnetic radiation and we'll be studying photoelectric effects today. In the past few videos, we've been discussing the dual nature of electromagnetic radiation and we studied about diffraction and interference which are properties which give us an indication that electromagnetic radiations have wave-like properties. In the previous video, I told you about black body radiation and how Max Planck, he gave the concept of quantization, a quantum which was known as the photon of uh, energy, of light. And the minimum energy of a photon was e equal to h nu, where h was known as the Planck's constant and nu was the frequency of the light. In this video, we are going to discuss about another phenomenon called photoelectric effect and what led scientists to believe due to photoelectric effect that electromagnetic radiations had particle-like nature. Now, Hertz in 1887, he took metallic plates and these metallic plates were potassium, rubidium and cesium plates and he carried out an experiment. He took this plate in a glass tube and he subjected it or he allowed light to fall over, a beam of light to fall over the metal. Now when he allowed a beam of light to fall over the metal, he found that it resulted in the ejection of electrons and these electrons which were ejected could be detected by a positive plate or by a positively charged wire. So when he found this, this particular effect of light which is photo, photo is light, so photons causing the release of electrons was known as photoelectric effect. What were the observations that they had with this experiment? The first was that the electrons are ejected as soon as light strikes the metal surface. There's no time lapse between the light touching it and the electron moving. It is somewhat like uh, when you play pool, one ball goes and hits the other ball and almost instantly the other ball moves forward. The next observation was that the number of electrons are proportional to the intensity of the beam of light. The number of electrons which are given out depended on the intensity of the beam. The stronger the light, the more were the number of electrons. The lesser the light, if the light was weaker, then the number of electrons ejected would be less. So this was the next observation. The third observation was that for each metal, there is a characteristic threshold frequency below which photoelectric effect is not seen, which means that the beam that strikes a metal, for every metal, there's one particular frequency of light below which it does not allow photoelectric effect. Or photoelectric effect is seen only when the frequency for that particular metal is above its threshold frequency. Every metal has its own threshold frequency or you can say h nu, since h nu is the energy, E is equal to H nu is what we studied, what uh, Planck had given. So the nu, that is the minimum frequency, that much of energy is required for every metal to eject the electron. And for different metals, this threshold frequency is different, which means you need at least a minimum amount of energy for every metal to throw out an electron. So this was written as nu, that is the frequency of light of the incident beam, should be greater than the threshold frequency, only then the phenomenon of photoelectric effect would be observed. So now, the fourth uh, thing that was uh, observed was that the kinetic energy of these photoelectrons increases with increasing frequency. If you have the threshold frequency, we observe photoelectric effect. But if we use a beam of, of a frequency which is much higher than the threshold frequency, the higher and higher the frequency goes, the more would be the kinetic energy of the photon or of the electron which is given out. How could this be explained? Now, according to classical mechanics, 
the energy of the beam of light should depend on the brightness if the light is bright the number of electrons given out should be more and not only should the number of electrons be given, being given out should be more the kinetic energy also should depend on the brightness of the beam that is incident on the metal but it was found that the electrons the number of electrons ejected does depend on the brightness of the beam but the kinetic energy does not depend on the brightness rather it depends only on the frequency now albert einstein in 1905 he explained this and what did he say that now for example if you took what was the observation that if you took red light and you allowed red light of any brightness a very bright red light was allowed to fall on potassium metal you would not see any uh, photoelectrons. Why? Because the frequency of red light is 4.3 to 4.6 into 10 to the power 14 hertz, which is less than the threshold frequency of, uh, of potassium. But on, at the same time, if you take a yellow light and if the beam is very, very light, if it's a very weak beam, the weakest beam of 5.1 to 5.2 into 10 to the power 14 hertz which is yellow light the weakest beam of yellow light also was showing photoelectric effect in the case of potassium so the the threshold frequency for potassium in other words should be approximately equal to 5 into 10 to the power 14 hertz so what did einstein explain looking at all these observations he said he moved ahead with the uh, Planck's uh, concept and he said that these photons have an energy of h nu and that minimum frequency which is required is uh, is the threshold frequency so when you have a photon you can imagine these photons to be packets of energy they are just like particles like balls and when a ball of the minimum energy which is required even if it is just one photon falls on the metal which has sufficient energy it will have the capability of throwing the electron out of the uh, out of the metal so it could be since electricity or sorry since light is made up of particles these particles they should have that minimum energy which can shoot out the electron so you can now imagine light to be somewhat as we studied it's a wave but this wave has particles in it which are traveling and each particle in a particular frequency of light all of them will have the energy h nu each particle has energy h nu if h nu is greater than h nu naught that is if the nu is greater than nu naught then photoelectric effect will be observed but if nu is less than nu naught no photoelectric effect will be observed then what is responsible for the intensity of light where is a light intense light is intense when all the particles have the same energy but the number of particles is much more then you have a higher intensity of light you can imagine this to be uh, the same beam with having a larger number of photons would be brighter so now with this in mind we know if the if the brightness is more the number of photons is more and if the number of photons is more then the number of electrons each one acts as a ball that throws the electron out therefore each one can throw a larger number of each one can throw out an electron if you have larger number of photons you'll have larger number of photo electrons too so the number of electrons ejected depends on the intensity but the energy of the electron depends on the on the on the energy of the photon so this was explained by einstein by the following formula h nu if this is the energy then it should be equal to h nu naught which is the energy required to push out an electron and some of that energy is used to uh, eject an electron from the metal surface and the remaining energy acts as the kinetic energy so the higher the frequency h nu naught is fixed higher would be the the 
uh, kinetic energy of the photoelectrons given out. So this is how it was explained why the the energy of photoelectrons or the uh, kinetic energy of photoelectrons depends on the frequency and not on the intensity. On the intensity, what depends on the intensity? The number of photoelectrons ejected depend on intensity. So it was concluded that ma electromagnetic radiations or light have two properties, wave-like and particle-like. And when they react with matter, when light reacts with matter, it displays particle-like behavior. But when it is being propagated in vacuum or in any medium, it acts as a wave. So this proved the dual nature of electromagnetic radiation. Thank you for watching. We'll be doing more on this in the next video. Please feel free to post any questions in the comments below. Thank you.